uh hi guys thank you for joining us today on this saturday evening to talk about music in the digital age so this is our second uh, iteration of the same topic the last one uh, was held last month and it was a huge success so everyone was asking for more uh so before we start i just want to give a shout out to our partner for this uh navaloka college of higher studies uh, they have actually sent us a special announcement uh if you are a student after o levels or a levels for our viewership uh, navaloka college of higher studies is offering new transfer programs to australia usa malaysia or the uk so you may study the first year in sri lanka and transfer to any of those countries upon the completion of your first year and they are offering a special bursary actually for the participants of today's session so if you are studying business it engineering health science hospitality management or law uh, with nchs you can call north 76530465 for more information so i'll put the number on the zoom chat so that uh, everyone who is interested can actually follow up uh other than that we have a small video that we need to play so we'll just do that now before the proceedings start welcome to nchs studying has never felt this good it's not just studying this is what a lab should be whatever i want whenever i need i don't miss a single class of it Plan to Australia next week. Commence degree pathways at NCHS and continue in Australia, Malaysia, or USA. Unlock your future. Right. So that was our partner for this webinar. Uh, so moving on to the proceedings of today. Uh, everyone, meet Shahara. She is going to be our moderator today. Shahara is a singer, metal vocalist and songwriter. She is also an independent artist, graphic designer, web designer and video editor. Uh she's the founder of Sri Lanka's first e-store for digital Sri Lankan music and her debut album Fountain of Memory is Sri Lanka's first metal album to be released by a female. So Shahara, uh stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Um this is a webinar by Talk about magazine, and it's awesome to be here. Um, so let's start off with. Pardon me, have you already introduced the, the webinar? Have you already told people what it's about? Pardon me. Sorry, I think uh, the okay. connection lagged a bit. Sorry, can everybody hear me and see me as well? Yeah, yeah, very good. So this webinar is going to be on. Um, successful and quality production as well as monetizing your tracks how to release them how to digitally distribute them and um basically how to be a successful artist in digital age so um the start off with i'm going to start off with the artists in the order of which i see you guys in um and the producers so first off we had kipshi kipshi who i have had the privilege of working with um he is a producer um and he is sri lanka's um one of the successful sri lankan uh, producers who has made it huge on spotify um let me just read his description he is sri lankan's highest streamed spotify artist and he's a producer songwriter and known to be through his psychopia and your story amidst the plethora of um his hits in the last three years your story went on to become the longest running number one single on yes home grown then one home grown's listeners pick a wallet when 17 Um, the follow-up single "Cold Beer" went on to become the first Sri Lankan song to cross a million streams on Spotify, and um, frequently featured by some of the biggest tastemakers in electronic music. If she is music, continues to cross borders with over three million streams on Spotify across international territories. In May 2019, if she, alongside producer Shenik Desera, launched Middle Class Rich Kids, which is an awesome pop electronic duo that, in the span of only the last seven months, has surpassed two million streams across Spotify and YouTube. um uh, he's also worked with amazing artists local artists and uh international so that's it chief um we have jani hi jani first time meeting you here um nice meeting you jani with over 10 years experience in the digital media industry in sri lanka has led many traditional media brands to step forward step into the digital world successfully 
Um, the country has the digital arm of the TV Dharna Media Conglomerate, which operates the biggest base of digital properties in Sri Lanka with over 20 successful websites. Um, and he is also the general manager and chief architect behind Idea Health, Sri Lanka's only creative space, which has been appointed a multi channel network of YouTube. Um, so, hi, Lai. Hi, hi. Sasi, hi. Hi, hi. Sasi is also a very great producer. Um, he has produced for artists in Sri Lanka and abroad. He has produced, worked with, collaborated. Um, he has remixed tracks by um, international artists like Bogota Mounds. Um, he Producers for um, genres like metal to electronic, and it's great to meet you too, Sasi. Likewise. And Costa. Hi, Costa. Hello. <laughs> it's good to meet you here. Um, so, Costa is a rapper, producer, vocalist, beat maker, hailing from Hill Capital Candy, um, has turned into more or less of a household name. And, um, well, yeah, he, he works he, from pop rock. To uh, punk, was it punk rock? Punk yeah, punk. it was back in the day, so yeah. Yeah, from all of that way, he's progressed to hip hop, rap music now, and um, he has made music videos in Finland and Sri Lanka. He's also performed locally and internationally, and he's also worked with all sorts of artists from Sri Lanka to international artists all over the world. So, we have an awesome panel of successful producers and artists. Who have um, well, who've made it here? I think uh, in singer and keyboard, but they're not the car though. But they're tired of it, right? So they have tried many things in their in their time of you know being producers and artists, and they have overcome many challenges. They have tried many strategies, failed at some, and successfully made it here this far. So um, we are here to share with you those strategies, and they may not be the exact thing that will work for you. But there are some certain set um, strategies that you can adapt to your art form and will help you make it huge just the way that. So um, I think the first question I'd like to ask in terms of production is for the producers here. Um, when it comes to producing music, we talk about the digital age and we talk about how artists can make music right in their homes, right? But what sets it apart and how do you make quality music, like really quality music that would be successful um, in, in your terms. If she could go with you first, please. Right. Um, just to make sure I understand the question, how to make quality music from home? Is but, that what you're asking me? Not from home precisely, but as a producer, what uh, qualities do you right. think of? What strategies would you implement to produce quality music? Right. Um, I don't think I can get very technical about it, and I'm sure, like, I mean, Costa and Sasit probably feel the same way, but um, a lot of the time, I mean, I can tell you for sure that if you ask any of these guys, if they were to rewind about four to five years, or maybe six to seven years, they probably can't stand to listen to some of the music they've made back then, right? Like, you listen to your shit back then, it's like, ah, what was I doing, right? I mean, it sounded good to you then, and so it's just... Um, to me, I think it's the 10,000 hour rule. Anything you do, you put enough time into it and you get better and better and better. Could be, could be design, could be what you do for work, could be videography. Just like that music is the same, right? It's time, it's a, it's, it's a matter of how much time you're investing into this thing you're doing. So for me, I guess like starting off in like 2013, 2014, I would say it was in 2017 that I got to a place where I was like, oh, okay, this sounds decent. And then 2018, 2019, 2020, I'm quite confident. I'm like, okay, now I don't worry about am I doing the right thing or the wrong thing? I can comfortably make music now, you know? So finally, I'm able to do that, but I think it was a long process of just sort of working out the little, little things, you know? You pick up, okay, this, my bass was always off back then. Now it's all right. My drums were always a little bit whatever back then. It's all right now. So for me, that was the thing. It was just a, a matter of time, you know, just getting better. Sasit, would you have a good I think it was the same for me as well. I started producing uh, in 2012. <laughs> it's been eight good long years. So within that eight years, I was focused on improving myself with each release. Uh, uh, in terms of what I make, it's, it's, it's a very competitive genre called drum and bass. And uh, not a lot of Lankans are engaged in that type of music. There's a lot 
that goes into uh, making drum and bass from uh, sound designing uh, to mixing and mastering. So it, it's kind of a it's been a very strenuous process in terms of getting that sound to sound how it's supposed to be. Um, but when I compare myself with what I did in 2012 and <clears throat> in terms of what I used to produce and the techniques that I use, uh, the way I process my drums or just like he, she said, how my, my whole approach to sound design has changed over time and that comes with experience. And uh, if you take in the drum and bass industry in the scene uh, from where I started, uh, if you take a few artists, so to speak, uh, if you take Noisia or Matthews or um, Emperor or Imanu or Abyss or whatever artist who, who's making bass in the scene right now, they've had a lot of it, a lot of work behind uh, what they do. At least around 15 years of work, uh, which 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 has which has turned into something right now. So just like it, he said, it's it's not just about making music, it's about continuously working on your craft and ensuring that everything uh, falls into place and uh, you're focused on what you do and uh, just stick into it and learn day by day, uh, collaborate with people that, that you're interested in working with um, and also marketing because you're not getting anywhere you want to without marketing because making music is 70% of, of what you do and the rest 30% or maybe some 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 can say it's, it's around 40% or 50% is marketing. Uh, it, it doesn't matter how, how, how much you're talented, uh, how, how much work you put in if you don't market yourself properly and if you don't uh, position yourself to, uh, into the, the required market uh, that, that you're uh, hoping to cater into. Um, so that's another aspect that I feel as if lots of producers can really focus on because out of, I mean, we have three producers right here right now and we, we are very conscious about marketing as a subject. Um, we, we constantly market ourselves in every way we can. Um, in my case and Hipshi's case, we both uh, send our music to promotion, uh, promotional network, YouTube channel, SoundCloud uh, promoters, so that we can get uh, extra expo exposure. Because the way I feel it, um, for genres like what we do, we fight with people who are outside from our country. We uh, we have competition from countries like Europe, UK, America, uh, Australia, those countries where those genres started to make waves. And the producers who are from these countries are really talented and they have pushed the genres to where it is right now today. So if we are, if we are to compete with them and make, a print or make an imprint on uh, with our music, we have to be extremely uh, cautious about everything we do. Basically, any move that we do uh, musically uh, has an impact on uh, how, how fairly we are going to do in the international market. I think that's, that's been one of the you, one of the very uh, important lessons that I learned uh, throughout these years because uh, basically if you are to succeed it's basically a fight with the other producers from other countries. I guess like the more time you spend on your art form the, the little details kind of reveal themselves to you right over time you kind of realize the meticulous details you actually have to pay attention to. So um, in that sense is there any advice you can give up and coming producers up and coming artists um, in terms of equipment or, or recording software that you could maybe you know uh, encourage or even the, one, even the ones that you use um, like what could you um, encourage artists who come to you especially to be savvy with? Uh, I think uh, it's better if Hipshi and Costa can input on yeah, that. Yeah, could you answer that for me, please? Yeah, for example, if you're talking, if you're talking about softwares and stuff, I really feel like softwares doesn't play a major role in making quality music. Uh, it's about trusting your ear and having just knowing that okay, what you do is right. So for that, you can either get uh, a person who has experience to check your work and let let you know that okay, what you did was good, because. Uh, 
when you start making music i will just come from the other topic to this so if you start making music like everybody start ma- starts making music from maybe it's like for example me i started making music in a very cheap software called songcast and uh, not songcast it was called uh, something called it, it my first google search was how to make easy music right and then i found out this very uh, basic software you can record music and it did the job because end of the day music is if you can convey what you have inside you to something that people can listen and it's quality in your own way and uh, software doesn't really play a major game it's your ear and it's your music so if you can convey your message through any software i think it does the job so people always ask me like when you make beats and when you have good records people ask what software do you use this a software has an impact towards your music um really no it's about uh how you make your art and if you can convey a message through whatever the software that you use i think you're successful in any range of the software that you use so and also regarding the previous question about like um how to make su- success like how to be uh now how to have like good music out there it's just like Uh, I, i agree with tbc and i clown as well that we all started in some like we all started somewhere and at back in the, back in those time like what we made was good for us and then now we here after 4 5 years it probably sounds like shit so the thing is that all these years when you hustle hard and work on your art your ears get trained to what's good and what's not so at this moment you feel like okay i can freely make music because now your ears are tuned so to get to there you can get reference from people who knows the stuff very well and also just keep on hustling and making music uh, till you feel like you have got to that point so that's the answer for me for these two questions in a nutshell in terms of uh, i think uh, in terms of gear all of us started in a very minimalistic approach i mean i remember when i first started making music i had a Uh, an hp laptop with 2 2 gb ram and i didn't have a sound card everything was software based and it it, it took a tremendous amount of time to get a song done but still i had the passion and the patience yeah. i sat my uh, i sat down and i i i completely focused on the product and that's it for me i mean i, I must have spent at least around 30 to 40 hours on one pro- one project because it took so much time to get the work done but in the end it doesn't it, it didn't matter because i had the passion and the patience to work for and uh, right now i think a- anything is accessible for a- anybody you can basically go to google and search how to make music and then you, you get like a ton ton of uh, tutorials to go through uh, the the problem that i see with producers who are upcoming uh, that most of them are not willing to put the time and the effort and they don't have patience they are not ready to spend the 15 20 hours on one track and um, spend that uh, required amount of time to market themselves out, but they are looking for one golden opportunity or one shot so that whatever they do magically comes into picture and everybody starts listening to them and then they become this huge icon that doesn't happen that doesn't happen with anybody martin jarrett produced for 10 plus years before he got uh, recognized by spinny records uh post malone uh, produced and made music for more than 10 years 15 years he was on the road for more than 10 years before he started uh, getting recognition skrillex slept in people's uh, couches before he became skrillex it's sheer and it's the same with all the successful producers it's the same with locals as well uh, it doesn't matter what gear you have or uh, what expensive uh, mixing software you have it, it, everything depends on your mindset and the amount of work and the amount of hours that you put uh, to, to what you make dedication um, really yeah yeah i think to just to add to that uh, the conversation of softwares i think if you look at really all the softwares in the market the truth is that they all offer you the same set of functions right yep. your making music is the same process what changes is that one might be slightly more user friendly than the other it all comes down to preference but they are all doing the same things so it really doesn't matter where you start whatever you can get your hands on you just start doing it and it's just yeah, a exactly. conversation of how long you're going to keep doing it like that's all it is 
and, and for me like sorry go on sorry no the throughout the way sometimes you might start with a different software and then you will figure out what's wrong in that and you can skip to some something else so you will find yourself more comfortable in that software so it's just about like trying out and figuring out what's best for you i guess it depends yeah. on person to person yeah so we want to keep trying and not give up right more exactly. you apply yourself the more creative <laughs> creativity you use the more creative you're going to get so uh, that's awesome um so from production to let's get into releasing the music um it's uh, i mean all of us know what monetizing is we know what digital distribution is but i think a lot of people just have heard the terms and like a lot of people i know for a fact um just know them as terms they know that it's useful that it's you know that it's uh, something that could be done but could you guys explain in the simplest terms what monetizing is jani that you would give that yes yeah, ara so i mean these guys know right i'm i'm the fish out of the water here these guys are the musicians and uh, i'm i'm the one here talking about money but uh thing is what we have to understand is no form of art can be sustained without monetization right you need to earn to to you know create good art so right now i think in terms like basically in in a natural monetizing is you know making money off of any content that you publish right so it could be videos it could be uh, audio it could be any form of video now i mean you know the the proliferation of platforms such as instagram tiktok i mean whether we like it or not these are all video platforms the and and there was there was a time where we used to say content was king i think right now video content is king right so even as as musicians these guys know it well right video has to be accompanied by good audio that that's part of the game right now so monetization can happen one of many ways right and right now sri lankans only mainly think of i think youtube spotify but then there are multiple other platforms that are coming up so i think for all of the musicians in sri lanka they have to view themselves as original content creators and not just musicians right because at the end you are making original content and that content can be monetized on multiple platforms so basically monetization again to just wrap up one it's it's for it's a form of original content that you put out into the world and then there are ways of monetizing it and and getting money from it and that is the only way you can sustain that art awesome um so in terms of youtube are there basic requirements that you need to fulfill to actually start monetizing yeah okay so quickly to brief you youtube monetization happens through a program called ypp it's the youtube partner program and it's rolled out from country to country it has not officially rolled out to sri lanka mainly because i think our, our internet population is is too small so they have their roll out plan every time i ask youtube they keep on saying that you know we will roll out ypp soon to your country but there's no timeline right so there are one of two ways you have to first hit the the basic cap that youtube has set which is 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours within the last 12 months so like for the layman that is quite an easy task if you are creative and you're putting out good content because by the time you put out about 10 videos that have an average of 3000 views you will hit that uh, basic requirement that youtube has set so once you pass that milestone you can apply for ypp if you reside in a country that has ypp if not you have to go through these creatures called mcn i, I mean they have a bad rap online because uh, most mcns have in the past acted like uh, you know in a, mon a monopolistic way taking content away from creators not giving them their due share so if you are considering monetizing through an mcn i highly suggest you read the contract right never give out your digital rights to any mcn right as an artist and an original content creator you must keep the digital rights with you and give only the monetization right if at all and never go into time bound contracts right sometimes i've seen creators get stuck with mcn contracts that are 10 years long and they just can't get out of it because they have basically given their birth right to off to an mcn and 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 they can't do anything beyond that right so if you are considering monetizing through an mcn i would suggest really reading through the content uh, the contract and and first understanding what, where you stand in terms of your digital rights because some sometimes you just give off all rights including ringing tones to merchandise all of that you give off and then as an artist you just burn out so that is how 
YouTube monetization currently works. So if, if, if you reside in a country that has YPP, you can apply directly once you hit those milestones. If not, once you hit those milestones, you have to go through an MCN, a multi-channel network. And even monetizing on Facebook and Instagram requires certain amounts, right? So uh, limits of uh, followers, subscribers, all of that. Yeah, I think this is something I can uh, reveal first to this panel. I mean, uh, just about two weeks ago, Mar Facebook also started rolling out monetization, right? So currently a few media companies have it, but then obviously they will uh, roll it out to creators as well. So it's not going to be just YouTube. You'll be able to monetize on Facebook as well. Awesome. Is that, um, awesome. So uh, in terms of then Spotify and iTunes streaming platform distribution companies up, how do you get your music um, on these platforms? I think Sasit and Hip should be able to answer this more than better than me. I think they are the. Yes, yeah. you got it on Spotify and iTunes and all of that in early stage. I think even Pratap can answer, or Costa can answer to that question as well. Okay. Hip and uh, Costa are killing it on Spotify, iTunes. Um, so basically, I guess you need to get yourself signed to uh, a distributor network such as DistroKid. And then uh, what else do we have? Songcast, CD Baby, TuneCo, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And anybody can uh, get themselves enrolled in one of these door services as well. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting yourself uh, enrolled and then you can basically upload your music to any of um, the commercial platforms that are available right now, such as iTunes and then Spotify, even TikTok and uh, um yeah so it's basically getting yourself signed uh, to one of the distributors i think most of the people have to be really honest within the two two uh within the last two years i've seen a massive growth of uh, uh, lankans getting into all the distribution networks which is really cool because most of the artists that are uh, coming into the scene right now are really focused on uh, getting their music into uh, the catalogs and uh, getting their music list, music uh, listed in uh, most of the commercial platforms, which is really cool. And I think um, uh, this 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 whole situation would uh, further push uh, Sri Lankan music uh, into the outer world. Because uh, before this 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 situation came into practice, there was there was kind of, there may have been a certain blockage. Yeah, music was not able to uh, get into the right years, uh, but now with the accessibility and uh, with the rise of the internet and uh, people uh, getting in touch with uh, most of these uh, uh, service providers, uh, we have been able to get most of the people uh, into catalogs. Even the old artists, people who have released in cassettes and uh, tapes have. Uh, started uh, distributing the music through iTunes and Spotify. I think this, this is really cool. Yeah, but I, I feel like we're very behind in terms of you know, digital distribution. We're still getting there as an industry. Um, and also, like like you said, CD Baby, Tunco, all of those uh, digital distributors, right? Um, these are platforms that, uh, that make it very easy for artists to get their songs on digital platforms, streaming platforms. Um, just one thing I'd like to say is that um, when it comes to all these platforms, one thing that you just need to look at and compare and contrast are just how, how much royalties you end up getting as an artist. Um, and and, uh, and so. if, you're possible, if you're able to get the royalties in the first place. Right. Uh, exactly. uh, right. It's a huge issue in withdrawing, uh, yeah. withdrawing money. Yeah, exactly. Because we can't withdraw cash from PayPal here, right? And most um, distributing companies do that. Uh, it was a little through uh, PayPal, but I think after COVID, some of the distribution uh, companies changed their, their terms, right? In, in terms of like, they could actually um, deposit to, I think, local accounts if you're a registered company and stuff like that. Um, but, with uh, is, uh, I don't think so. Uh, there's a bit of a process to it, a legal process to it, but uh, yeah, you have to like submit tax forms. Yeah, you know, that's right. So all of that. So that's something that if you are very serious about your artistry and you really want to be um, a successful artist who is monetizing their, their music through their music, then I think these are things you also need to look at, like, you know, registering companies, tax forms, all of that. Um, Hipshi, would you like to comment, please, about Spotify, about getting your music? Because you can do it as an independent artist, but you have other ways as well. 
Yeah, I mean, my model is a bit different. I'm sure we've talked about this before. Uh, I don't release my music myself. I work with um, labels outside of Sri Lanka, which makes it a makes it pretty easy for me um, in the sense that they take care of the release and the promotion aspect of it. So they will release my music. They have the, a big enough platform to get the music out there, get it heard. Um, and they monetize the music for me and they pay me my royalties. So um, all the challenges that Sasit is addressing personally, I have not had to face that because I've fortunately fallen into a different sort of model. Um, hopefully during this conversation, I'll be able to tell you how that model works and like how it works for me. Um, but in terms of like answering your question, I think that's where I stand because I don't really have to deal with some of this stuff. That's the normal thing. <laughs> I actually started the normal way. Like I started off with a website called Soundcast, which I started uploading my albums. Then I figured out that it was a little bit too expensive because certain uh, distributors, they take money for like your uploads and for singles and everything. And there are certain distributors who charge a yearly fee where you can upload as much as you want. So it's about figuring out which distributor works for you the best. If you're a person, who releases contents really fast or like it really depends for me because song car and then they have different payout dates for example there are specific distributors who will charge you more but the payout is on the right day and it never changes but then you will have people who will charge you a yearly fee for example distrocate and then you might have your royalties on different days of the month so there are pros and cons using your distributor I'm talking about like if you're, if you're talking about basic distributors without publishing nothing because Songcast, uh, Distrocade, CD Baby, they do, they do only uh, distribution, no publishing, nothing else. So if you just want to get your music out there on Spotify, iTunes and all these paid streaming sites, I mean, you can pick whatever that you feel that you will be comfortable and then just keep on uploading your music. But then at some point you have to be advanced because recently in sri lanka also we went through a problem of people illegally downloading our music even though from these distributors like for example from itunes spotify whatnot so if you can level up your game that you can publish your music and if you can go up to that uh, level i think that's better for you because regardless if people steal your music then you can still get paid off from the record label that who will collect the royalties for you which I think works in Hibishi's case. Because for example, if you, nah, I, I probably think that you're signed to a very major record label out there. So if somebody steals your music, they will chase behind them and get your money for you. But if you upload from a normal distributor like DistroKid or Sankas, regardless who, who no, everybody can steal your music, but I don't, they don't chase behind your music and get your royalties for you. Uh, so yeah, you can, start, you can start somewhere, but you have to level up your game. I think it's, Signing with the label uh, is a good practice when it comes to collection of your royalties and going behind people who steal your music. Yeah. Uh, basically, you have two options to release it on your own or uh, to go with the label. Uh, a label has its own pros as well, but there are cons as well when it comes to the percentages of distribution. Uh, but personally, I would prefer to go through a label. Uh, and uh, so far, I've done that as well. Uh, the past releases, the EPs that I've done, uh, the drum and bass EPs that I've done came through labels and they've been very stringent about uh, uh, people illegally uploading your music to uh, these all these blogs and uh, distributing it without your permission. Uh, they go behind these people and then uh, they make sure that uh, all these things, have, things are taken down. But when it comes to self-releases, uh, it's really difficult to control because in Sri Lanka, there's no proper IP law in existence to protect your craft as well. So anybody basically can upload their music to any of uh, those blogs and uh, do whatever they want. But um, I think people are getting into this whole, uh, whole process of stopping um, people from illegally stealing your music. I think there was a huge conversation um, very recently about uh, media channels doing the same thing as well i wouldn't want to go to uh, uh, go to that topic in session but uh, that 
is the current situation right here i mean people are getting conscious about uh, ways that others are still in their work and they're trying to make something happen so that uh, it won't happen for the future generations um i think it's 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 a new improvement when it comes to uh, this whole copyright infringement and, uh, and making sure that uh, your royalties are being directed to you properly um yeah to uh, youtube so jani there's a way to um i mean retain copyrights and also get royalties right through youtube you saying that you could elaborate on that yeah, so i think uh, music labels like sasit and, and these guys said right music labels when you go through them they are in in their nature an mcn so they have the copyright protection that you need so in youtube there's this like without getting too technical everything you upload on a on a partner channel uh, there's this thing called an asset that's created right an asset is like a mathematical formula for every frame of your video for every sound bit of your video right so youtube has this mechanism where if it's uploaded anywhere else on youtube it's automatically tracked right even if the video is flipped horizontally people try these things right they take someone's original content they put it within a frame thinking youtube will not uh, match it but then it's always matched their algorithms are really good so what happens is when you go through a label and and your your content is on a partnered account no one can upload it when you upload anything you you get multiple options as artists right sometimes you can allow covers for your songs right but then the monetization the all the money that comes to that cover comes to the original artist right so sometimes you have even multiple controls like maybe covers can be allowed up until 1 minute and the person who did the cover can get the monetization and if the cover is longer than 1 minute the the original artist gets the 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 monetization so you have a myriad of of, of controls when you go through a label and 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 your uh content is protected on youtube so that's one way and and again sasit mentioned this right even in sri lanka because i i mean apart from idl i i represent a media organization as well the the conversations we are having about ips I, I, and 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 giving the royalties to artists is is progressing far faster now which is great because you have to understand that that in sri lanka for any change to happen the old horses need to change right because most of the time we've been doing things a certain way and 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 why we've not changed is is that the the thinking has not changed from from any of the young younger generation that comes to the top of these organizations right so we, with this recent conversation also i think it's very healthy where we are going and sasit there are certain things right now now for even ip violation there are few organizations in sri lanka that you can go to like cert and then there's a, a cid office at the telecommunications ministry and they i worked with them in the past they're very good so i i highly recommend because no one should steal anyone's content right so if there is something and 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 see we need uh, precedence right in sri lanka so if there's one court case where where it it rules in favor of the right zone that court case can be that that decision can be used by any artist so collectively as a community of of musicians and original content creators if you if we as a habit protect our rights and and speak up about these things i think where we will go as a country to recognize those rights and protect them and and make sure artists can continue their art form without being plundered by others is 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 going to happen very fast so those are the things that i i also see and i agree that sri lanka is heading in the right direction but we need to push it for sure yeah it's like the percentage of sri lankans compared to the entire world is like what right and then the the amount of musicians we have is much less so i mean i think for all of us to actually take local music seriously and actually you know make it uh, a label that we are doing something that's really important that local music is valid that it is going places i think all of us need to work collectively to actually like move it forward in terms of legalities and all of that we have to work yeah. together i think and a collective decision is what really sets it and solidifies it so um, um what is hearty share is like, like for up until now our, our online population was very like meager compared to the rest of the world right but then because of covid we've seen like according to our research i mean where we as a country would have been in in 2025 we've been pushed to now right people are purchasing online they are more free with putting their credit card details which was something that we didn't do so we are more ready to purchase online so as musicians this is a great time to you know monetize your content because yes sri lankans have always gotten used to getting music free right so 
we have to change that mentality that music is not free it can't be just downloaded off a torrent site or something like that and this is the best time to do it because currently i mean our, our internet penetration has gone up to 10 million right and we have close to 8 million facebook accounts right so that power can be harnessed if if all of us and introduce the fact that music is not free it 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 takes a lot of effort and and to hear good music we should be able to pay and right now we are in the right path as sri lankans because we are more ready to pay for things online so it's a good opportunity to harness um so how we can get on the distribution platforms as we have it can you um can all of you because you have you are distinct artists who have actually pushed the limits of spotify itunes um, all these streaming platforms should we shall we take it a launch up and uh, talk about how we can um increase the number of views listens what strategies can be implemented to get there if you could you um tell us about spotify yeah um i'll i'll go a little bit um i think i'll have to rewind a little bit for that i'll give you a little bit of context before i get into spotify um i think um the model that i use to release music is quite different uh, from the way a lot of people in sri lanka might do it um i think sasit can attest to this because um us some of us artists who start in the electronic music space um we kind of do things a little bit differently right so um what happened was back when youtube really started popping uh there were these people who started uploading songs they liked on youtube channels based off of genres they liked right so some kids started uploading country music some kids started uploading house music some kids started uploading trap music with time these channels got really big right to the point where now they have 3 4 5 million subscribers right these channels got really big and these the the people who own these channels they began to sort of spread out of youtube and go on to create spotify playlists apple music playlists they started forming networks and they went on to become the modern independent label right like that is what it is now um these are just people who were once sharing music they liked who have now created a big enough platform that they can work with artists and release music for them monetize music for them and sort of pretty much do everything a major label can do and they are working they are connected very well connected with the sony's and the universal's and the warner music's as well but they are you know just legitimate labels in their own right so for me what happened was i think when i started making music i just um used to observe these channels and i used to aspire to be on it but the thing was um i think from 2014 2017 i was sending music Uh, to these channels i had no idea about labels my whole goal was let me just try and get on a big youtube channel because that might mean views right so i was trying to do that um and i kept getting rejected because these people work with like you know artists in europe and us and all these places where they are making quality music whereas in sri lanka just you know we aren't really learning how to do that so it was a matter of sort of teaching myself how to first make good enough music to get these people's attention So I think by 2017 I managed to accomplish that I put a lot of time into it and again going back to your question of equipment and software and all of that at this time I was still working out of a laptop at home with a pair of headphones right but you know with enough time and persistence I I think there was um, at some point in 2017 I figured out things enough to make this song called Cold Beer which um I then managed to sign onto this channel on YouTube who Uh, so who wanted to sign into their label right that was the first time i was introduced the idea of labels and monetization and making money off of your music and how that whole thing would work um that song cold beer is now the first sri lankan song to hit a million streams on spotify right um and so like what enabled me to do that was not really creating the audience myself but sort of leveraging someone who already had the platform that is a label or a content creator who already had the platform so my model has sort of become that where i work with these um people who have their platforms who have now converted to labels and are helping me promote and monetize my music so that's what i do um if we really get into the the the, the uh, i don't know the if we really get into the process um there's a lot we could talk about i don't think we even have the time but that is the overall model that works for me but if you're asking me how you push your music on spotify i would say that's a whole conversation about playlists and anybody who is interested in that needs to do a little bit of research on how playlisting works on Spotify and getting your song featured on enough playlists is how you grow on that platform 
And there are different things that work for YouTube, different things that work for Apple Music. So that's a little bit of insight I have on the subject. Also, how about like, um, yeah, the thing is that uh, I feel like what Hibishi and uh, Sasit would agree is that you could get your music into a playlist if it's English music, right? So especially when you're ma making music in Sinhalese and you're trying to get into this uh, Spotify and iTunes game, which is very new in Sri Lanka. Um, I think this model doesn't work for us because, for example, I mean, I wish that I could put my music on like... Uh, good Spotify playlist and the Spotify playlist that we could actually put our, can put our music are bots. I have researched them. Most of, most of the views come from bots and you don't really get like the proper exposure that you expect from a playlist. So my model of getting more views and uh, views on Spotify and iTunes is I have a consistent uh, content method that I follow. For example, I upload my, that's a normal procedure that didn't happen in Sri Lanka before that I tried to implement and it's, it's working for me. So before when I made music, I started uploading my music on YouTube thinking that, okay, I would make money out of YouTube, right? But then since our contents are like less than three minutes or a little bit over three minutes, you are actually not making so much royalties of YouTube because as a musician, then I figured out, okay, your platform to make your royalties are is not YouTube, but you can promote yourself there and then make make yourself a good image on YouTube and send your listeners because end of the day we are musicians, we should sell the song first because uh, I that's what I feel like. Of course, we should get more views from a video, but then we you should sell the song. So what, how can you, uh, for a Sri Lankan musician, say you make music in Sinhalese and you want to press your, uh, you want to get more views on Spotify and iTunes, I feel like First of all, build a good image on YouTube, right? Have uh, continuous content on YouTube. Then push your audience to Spotify and iTunes through YouTube. So then they will actually start, okay, you, you say you have a six track EP. Push around two, three videos on YouTube, heavy. And then give the links that they can listen to the entire album on Spotify and iTunes. That's what I actually do. It's a very simple plan which works for me. So I always release my album first, then push couple of good videos on YouTube and then get my people to listen to my music on Spotify and iTunes. And I feel like I'm getting an okay uh, amount of royalties compared to YouTube because as far I, I even, uh, even Janit will agree that because uh, if you think about content creators, if you have content longer than 10 or 12 minutes, uh, the amount that you get for a person like that is very different from a person like us who uploads content less than three minutes. So for musicians, please like build up a good career on YouTube, build up a good, uh, like put up your music on YouTube and get more views, get your audience right, and then push your music on Spotify and iTunes. I think that works for us since we don't have so many playlists or actually we don't have any playlists at all. And also, I think, if uh, we, Costa, I think we, we do, could... actually, yeah, I have started creating playlists and like yeah. stuff like that <laughs> because uh, now <laughs> since I know that people are listening stuff on Spotify and iTunes, uh, and it's not only me. I have seen a couple of people who does that. And that's a good way. I mean, you should start creating playlists. And because if you have a common topic uh, and if you can, you know, segregate your music and put it there, of course, you will start getting more plays. And I actually realized it even like not so much, not like Hibishi or Sasit probably, but at least a couple of hundreds if you can submit your song to a proper playlist because it will set the mood and your song will keep on getting played. So... I think for yeah. us, as Sri Lankan musicians who makes music in Sinhala, that's what I'm following right now. And uh, yeah. there's this special strategy that we use as well. We release the audio first and then we go for the video. Yeah. We don't release the video first and then release the audio. We straight away upload it to uh, the distribution networks and then release the video. Because what happens usually when we release the video, people go to YouTube and then they rip off the MP3 of uh, the video and then uh, any chances of monetization is uh, lost uh, then and there. What we do right now is we put out the audio first and then after about a couple of weeks or maybe uh, let's say around three weeks, then we release the video so that people have time to go to these platforms, buy the, buy the, uh, buy the MP3 or start streaming and then uh, 
uh, there's enough time uh, for us to uh, make uh, a decent amount of royalties out of uh, the, uh, the networks. Yeah, I think yeah, if I can add something here, yeah, Costa, I think you touched on the biggest dilemma most musicians have on YouTube, right? Because it's a it's a video centric platform, and and yeah. as musicians, and and generally to to have a successful YouTube channel, you have to at least have one video a week. And most mm -hmm. uh, you know artists that I've worked with through Idea Hell, uh, what the biggest question they ask is how the hell are we going to do that with musicians, right? So there's a small trick. I mean. What your strategy is, it's perfect, right? But another way you can leverage YouTube as a platform is generally on YouTube, people subscribe to personalities. And, and in essence, your music is your personality, right? So what yeah. I've helped done, I mean, I've worked with artists. Now you guys have come through the digital age. I have worked with artists who have been there before in, during the CD age and then, you know, transition to YouTube and all these new platforms. And one of the key takeaways from working with those guys, like even BNS who worked with Idea Health. So what, what we've, did with them is we've asked them to essentially become vloggers, right? People become like, that's the way you can do more video content on YouTube and still use your strategy to push people to Spotify and iTunes mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you know what, what people are, whether you like, sometimes people don't believe this as musicians, but people like to see what you do during the day, apart from music. Right? So there are certain blogs and, and certain things, just bits of content that you can do as musicians on YouTube, which is not, to do with music. And sometimes, I mean, uh, what Sasit said was perfect because we, we also generally release the audio first, then the video, and sometimes in the lyric version. So as a musician, you can take one piece of content and, and break it apart into multiple videos so that you don't like, even if you release an original every three months, you might have content to upload, you know, uh, that's not just one video. So maybe your music videos, then the lyric version, then guitar riffs, I mean, the drum cover, dance covers, we've seen, I mean, you and Costa will attest to this. Sri, Sri Lankan, a lot of Sinhalese music have become popular after dance covers. I think that's because we are a nation that likes art in that form, right? So certain songs that were already on YouTube didn't become popular until a dance cover hit, right? So I think these guys touched on it earlier. Collaborations are the key. So as a musician, there are a lot of collaborations you can do, especially in terms of YouTube, right? And then my my hack is for them to do stuff that is apart from music, but just to keep that regular one video a week in so that your YouTube channel stays relevant enough for you to be able to push it, uh, push viewers from that to YouTube, uh, Spotify and iTunes. I think in that terms, what, what something that I started uh, doing is I started documenting uh, the creative process. I started it with uh, one of the collaborations I did uh, uh, with uh, Charita Dhyan, Ravijay Kohl, Rahat Kim uh, I started blogging the entire process of production. Uh, from the day we sat down to make uh, the song to the day where we finished the video with Bangladesh. Shout out to Meraki, uh, they're killing it right now. Uh, so, um, this whole concept of blogging the entire process of creativity uh, gave me an insight to the fact that people like to do, like to see how we create the music. It's just not not, not a matter of uh, people listening to what we make, but they want to know how we make it as well. Uh, it's a concept relatively newer to Sri Lanka, but in other countries, this is a constant practice. They do live streams, uh, they do tutorial videos for each week, so it's something really, uh, it's something that's been done already, but. Uh, Still, in, when it comes to Sri Lanka, it's in different stages and it's definitely something that uh, most of the producers and uh, all the artists uh, should follow on because people really like to see this. Yeah, even uh, for the for this vlog that I did uh, for Rahat Kimurong, it has around like 40 to 50,000 views as, as of now. Um, and when I compare that, uh, when I compare that as a percentage of the views that we got for the original, it's, it's something. It's around 10 to 20 percent, which is really cool. I mean, yeah. People and it's are easy. actually interested to see this. It's easy content, right? You're anyway exactly. going to do that because you're exactly. going to anyway go record. It's just a matter of taking your camera to the studio and keeping it somewhere and working the way that you usually work. You don't have to act or anything. You just naturally do what you do. It's just a matter of recording it and then you put it, put it out as a vlog. And uh, there's a huge market uh, for producers to uh, look into this live streaming and uh, doing this 
blogging the creative process uh, is something that producers and uh, musicians should get into adi pratap is getting into it as well right now i mean yeah. uh, there's a collaboration coming with me pratap and ravi ji and i started uh, recording everything and i'm asking these guys to record as well because i want to do a vlog because i want to show people how how we are going, uh, how we are making music so i think uh, this this vlogging concept uh, is something really relevant for uh, musicians as well it, it, it shouldn't be something that's been done by bloggers or people who create uh, content based on various events that happen uh, in their lives it should be something that uh, musicians should be open to do as well i have another idea actually uh the thing is that uh, for example if you are a producer and you make your own music and you know you do the whole thing by yourself for example if you have seen a channel called genius what they do is uh, they have a program called beats be, be constructed or something like this right so what they do is they explain the whole scenario behind the beat what's the mood how did they make the beat and also they have another segment called explaining the lyrics since we don't have a youtube channel or a partner like genius i mean if you are ready to hustle i mean i think you can do that on your youtube page by yourself i'm going to like, start it <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, that's what i was thinking I, actually i was thinking and, about the same thing and i'm going to get you all involved as well uh, it's in the in, in the works right now but uh, i have a lot of producers in mind i think it's something really value adding as well uh, cuz um, right now we are the industry is i don't see collaboration as an important topic right now because people don't really understand uh, the the entire process of collaboration and um, there's a lot of politics in the world i don't want to get into it but people are people are a little bit producers musicians are a little bit distant but this has to come together i mean when you look at uh, things that are happening in the us market with channels like genius it's incredible it's it's mind boggling how 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 they get in together and create some really amazing music inside the studio and and uh, we get to see them through all these channels and they explain how we did this how we made that kick how we layered this with this it's incredible and this should happen in the local industry as well it's happening in india as well and it's something that should happen in sri lanka as well because i don't know there might be a kid uh, in a bedroom who would watch this video and uh, get into producing and maybe in a couple of years we might have have uh, a sultan or a skrillex from sri lanka it is just a matter of us as producers getting together and uh, really uh, with with the use of internet uh, to do something really amazing and uh, helpful uh, for the entire industry i think one thing um, every artist every producer anyone who wants digital content to kind of like make it on their pages i think it, and something very important is authenticity right because like you're not a bot on social media and social media is one way to actually connect with your fans and your followers so if you can just break out of that veil of you know trying to be this professional person on instagram or like influencer constantly and if you're just being yourself if you're authentically sharing what you're doing um just explain your music to people so they understand it uh, i think it really works well it just connect with your followers connect with your viewers and that makes a huge difference like for me personally um like i launched my own website the payment gateway and everything right my tunes are on spotify also so distribution companies are uh, distribution platforms but for me personally i made the most amount of sales through selling merchandise and online sales through my websites because i connected with my with my um, fans more and like through face most of, most of my purchases were through dms so i think that worked for me well just because i kept in touch and through instagram as well um and you don't have to have like you know millions of followers on instagram and facebook and all of that you just need to be authentic and connect with the little people you should there you, you should also uh, mention a little bit more about your website cuz it's open to any of the local artists uh, to yeah, uh, yes. start selling their music thanks um so just a few months ago i i launched a website called shahara sinaki music which is sh3shai.com right um and it's based on the framework is spotify and itunes and all of that but the reason i started it is because i felt like the payouts weren't enough for local artists and the the, the process to actually get payouts to local artists was such a hassle so i launched a website for sri lankan artists where all artists and bands can sell their tracks for 140 rupees and they get 75% of the sales they make which is 105 bucks per track 
Um, and also, you know, you could sell your merchandise online. It's basically a platform to financially support artists here and, you know, get their payouts directly to the Sri Lankan bank accounts. So, yeah, it's, it's open to all artists of all genres, um, all languages. sales then you know this is a platform where artists can do that um i mean i think all of us are capable of doing that um these are all outlets where we can i mean all outlets we can explore and use to maximize our artistry um and yeah i mean i think all of you in each individual day of a, you know are successful in doing that so um what, I think, the, uh, what about merch i think out of us all Costa is killing it with merch right now. <laughs> yeah. Costa, like, can you give us an insight? I, I actually you? wanted to ask Jehar as well, like because she said she sells merch on her website, right? Yeah. Uh, is it? Did, stuff like that. Okay. Posters did you sell? Like did you sell on Facebook? Is it a Facebook store or like a different website? No, so it's, it's an independent website. Okay. Okay. I'm interested about that because I'm trying to do that because <laughs> right now, right now the way yeah. I sell it is very different actually. Because, um, like, uh, what, what Janit told was very interesting to me. Because after the Corona incident, you said people, a lot of people started actually putting their cards and spending money on internet, right? This was a problem that we we had before. That people are very, I don't know, they are scared to put their cards and give their personal information yeah, on websites to, you know, purchase something. That's why up to now, yesterday I made a decision. Okay, I have to make. I have a website, but I have to make a merch store because all this time I was selling merch off a of google sheet so what i do is like uh, i like i have my fan base so when i release a song i promote my merch on my website and if, like on my facebook and my youtube i give a link that you can actually fill up on as a google sheet and you can pick the t-shirt and whatnot so we get the pre-date of how many people wants the t-shirt then we actually print it out and sell it to them which was practical for me up till now because i figured out there are some people who does some bullshit out here because they fill somebody else's address and somebody else's name and when you deliver the t-shirt he has never ordered anything like that you know so that's when i figured out okay i had to collect now i have to collect the money first before i like you know give out the t-shirt because sometimes when you get like uh, when you send it out there and you have to return it back it costs you more than like you know yeah, so now I'm facing this issue right now. So I, that's why I was interested in what Shehara said. So probably so one way can be I mean, you can either get the get the guys to buy it to deposit the cash directly to your to your bank account and then yeah. deliver it by yourself. But then there's also people that I work with that I've tied up with who can who deliver for like 150 bucks in Colombo. Um, hmm. And yeah, so they you make the purchase online and then within 48 hours they deliver it. So yeah, that's cool. They pick it up from you and they deliver it to the person who ordered. So it's like a very secure payment gateway through WebEx Pay, right? These guys have been working with like huge companies. And they have multiple payment methods like, you know, EasyPay, Sampad Vishnu, mm. MasterCard, Visa. They have just basically every, everything that you need to make online payments. And it's super secure. So, mm. yeah. I want to know, I want to know more about the guys who are pranking Costa. <laughs> dude, this, dude, this just happened. This just happened. The la this last batch like that I did because all this time I was giving out merch and it was on point, right? The people who ordered this merch, they wanted it. They paid the delivery fee. They got it. This time my friend called me and he was like, bro, there's 25 t-shirts got rejected. I was like, why? Because these addresses, like these people say that they never bought it. So okay. it's, pro yeah, yeah. So it's probably somebody else who, like, you know, I don't know for what reason. So they filled up somebody else's name and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, pranked on me. So I don't think they will ever prank on me if they pay the money first. So that's what I learned from that. So, you know, I'm not going to do the same mistake again. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, awesome. Yeah, I think that's it. Anything else you'd like to add? Anybody else would like to add about monetizing? Um, and I tell you, there's one thing I wanted to ask. So monetizing, yes, you covered uh, what it basically is, right? But could you just elaborate one more time on how much artists can, you know, kind of make through videos, uh, what they can look forward to? She asked the question that is always asked, uh, how much money will I earn for 100,000 views? Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I, uh, if, I get, if I get money every time I'm asked this question, I think I'll be very rich. 
Okay, so I'm going to attempt to answer this in the most uh, diplomatic way possible, right? So basically, for anyone who's listening who doesn't understand the concept, your money is generated from the ads you see when you watch a YouTube video, right? So you see a form of at least four to five ads, the ones that we generally see at the beginning, the skippable ad that you generally curse as soon as you open a YouTube video. So that generally gives you the most amount of money in terms of CPM. CPM is cost per meal, cost per thousand, right? So as, as uh, I think Costa said, right, when you upload videos that are less than three minutes, the ad breaks that you can put are less, right? And also every view is not the same. So for example, I'll just, for people to understand, like within the Derana network, we have close, close to about 70% of our views come from Sri Lanka, right? But out of that 70%, that 70% makes up for about only 20% of our revenue, okay? So 10 to 15% of our uh, videos are viewed in Australia that 10 to 15% amounts to about 45% of our revenue. So that's the revenue split because the, the market in, in, in Australia is more competitive. Uh, advertising on YouTube works on a bidding system. So the more advertisers there are, obviously the more payoff you get, right? So in Sri Lanka, it's going up year on year, at least 20% increase we are seeing in terms of YouTube revenue. Okay, so why did I say all of this? Because the your YouTube revenue that is calculated is, is based on all of these factors, right? How many ad breaks there are, how many ads there are, sometimes time of the day, uh, then you get the months, April and December are generally the highest because people's uh, companies' uh, ad spend goes up during those uh, months. And most importantly, the, the country of your viewers, right? So if you have majority outside of Sri Lanka or European markets, your, your, your revenue is higher per, the, per view. So roughly as a ballpark figure for 100,000 views, there have been times where we've gotten 7,000 rupees and there have been times where we've gotten 30,000 rupees. So that is the spectrum. So when you get more money, it, it automatically means that you are getting better ad rates from other countries. So if most of your 100,000 views are from Sri Lanka, you, your ad rates and your revenue will be lower. So that is the spectrum. So for 100,000 views, this age old question has been answered. For 100,000 views, you'll get an average about 20,000, 25,000 Sri Lankan rupees. Janit, I have, I'm sorry. Janit, I have a question for you. Sure. Like, just, just to like, you know, get an idea. So you say like, I know this subject as well because you said like uh, the views that you get from Sri Lanka doesn't, it, it gives the least as money from your cut, right? And what's the reason for this and how can we improve this? Right. So, uh, the amount of money you get, right? For sometimes when you watch a YouTube video from Sri Lanka, you might not even see one ad, right? You might just watch the whole video. You don't see an ad, right? However, if you are traveling abroad, you would have noticed if you're in Singapore or Australia or in the US area, there's never going to be a time where you watch a YouTube video without an ad, right? That's because of this thing called ad serving. So at any given time, when someone from Sri Lanka is watching an ad, Let's say, like, just to understand it, right? There are 100 advertisers right now in Sri Lanka advertising on YouTube, okay? However, in Australia and, and US, there are 1,000 advertisers, right? So the ads are more, and the, the, the chances of your video getting an ad being served is higher. Though as a YouTuber, you, you get to put your ad breaks manually, right? You would have seen that. Though you put three ad breaks, if there are no ad, if there are three ads to be served at that given time, you might not even see an ad. So that view is an unmonetized view, right? So how can we, to answer the, how can we improve uh, the revenue you get from Sri Lanka is actually not in our hands, but thankfully with the way digital is going, it's increasing now from last year to this year, 2019 to 2020, for the first three the months, the first quarter I was actually uh, doing the analytics, right? The revenue from Sri Lanka has gone 20 fold, which is a big increase, I think. Right. So for you, if your if your audience, since you are you you do get a big audience from Sri Lanka, you don't have to do much because obviously people will start advertising more and more on YouTube. I mean, especially during COVID, internet usage went up heavily. Right. But unfortunately, advertisers weren't there because companies were cutting back on advertising. However, once this normalizes a little bit more and businesses are getting back to advertising on YouTube, this is going to be a massive increase in our Sri Lankan revenue bracket. Right. That's something we've not understood yet. So for, for content creators who have like, sometimes YouTubers have stopped during this COVID uh, times, right? Putting content out, which is a big mistake because right now is the best time to get audience, but not money, 
right? Because people's internet usage has shot up, right? However, right now you, you won't get a lot of monetization. This is the best time to build subscribers. This is the best time to build followers because people are more online than ever before, right? So this is the best time to build, but you will be able to monetize that very soon. And couple that with Spotify, iTunes, all of that, you're gonna be a successful artist. It's possible, these are proven facts. Um, you know, we're so used to hearing uh, artists don't make that much money. Uh, the industry is not gonna, you know, it's not making it monetized. There's no way to, there's no way to make cash out of your artistry, but this right here is digital age and we are so capable of doing it. If we use the proper strategies, connect our fans more. Um, if we constantly push and try out different strategies, adapt to, you know, what kind of creativity process we, um, I mean, our creativity process is, all of us aren't the same. We're all unique in our own ways, so it's very important to kind of explore that, keep at it, and uh, yeah, grow in our own ways, right? Um, to shuffle art, do we have any questions from Facebook or from uh, Zoom? I'm not too sure if we do, like uh, on Facebook, this goes on Facebook as well, so if there are any questions, please let me know. Um, there were a few questions on Instagram, guys. Um, first, uh, there was one person who asked um, what your opinion is about the Sri Lankan English hip hop scene. Bodhi, yes. And can you can you repeat the question? Did they ask me? Uh, yeah, they asked uh, what, what your perspective is about the, sing the, the English hip hop scene. Well, uh, okay, let me be honest with you. I have seen really good artists who does English hip hop in Sri Lanka, right? But uh, for some reason, I have done features as well with different artists who does music in English. For some reason, the, like, let me, okay, about the English hip hop scene in Sri Lanka, there's not much going on, but the guys who does that, they do a great job. I know a couple of artists who are up there who can actually hit like international markets. But um, as far as their game, they are not so consistent. They don't take this as a career or put out music in a consistent way that they can hit these markets. But yeah, it, it can be grown. That's all I can say. It can be grown. Our people needs to hear more of like uh, Sri Lankan English hip hop music. Uh, there's talent. And I think if people start putting it out there and get, the, get our listeners ears get tuned to it, I think it will have a great future because that's one way to break into the international market. So making music in English and uh, regardless of what genre it is. So I think it can be grown. I know a couple of good artists, a couple of good bands who does really good music. So, and they have a real good game in like uh, performing out there, having gigs and stuff, but not such an online personality. So I think if they can uh, improve that, I think Sri Lanka has a good future of bringing out Sri Lankan English hip hop as well. That's what I can say. You guys think we covered everything that everybody needs to know about production, monetizing, anything you'd like to add? Do we have anything to add? Um, just one little thing, uh, since we're talking about, I mean, this is more so for people who are looking to get into music and have a career doing it, right? Um, I think more than me, I think I clown and Costa can talk about this, but I think that people who are looking to take music seriously should really look at like performing live because that is a big source of revenue for a lot of artists. Um, I don't do it myself. I kind of try to be a streaming first artist, but for the people who do it, that is another way of like making money and sustaining a career doing this. Um, if you guys have anything to add on that, I think it might help some people. I think performing live uh, has more disadvantages than, uh, sorry, advantages than disadvantages. Because uh, it, it's, it's it's one of the ways that you have a direct contact with your fan base and uh, it's one of the ways that that you can uh, look for new fans as well because people are people from various backgrounds come to gigs and uh, maybe they've not heard you and uh, that could have been the first time that uh, they hear your music and the next time um, you will see them in your fa uh, fan page so performing live uh, is really essential and not just in Sri Lanka, I mean, aim, aim to the skies, guys. Right? Performing outside Sri Lanka should be your goal. To, for that to happen, you need to perform in Sri Lanka. 
it, it's a chain so basically try to perform as a live artist as much as you can i mean it, it gives me immense pleasure when i'm up on stage playing my tunes really loud and um, it's a, it's a whole new different experience i mean i've dj'd as well and i performed as a part of a band with constellation and then uh, with uh, the queeny gig and uh, many more gigs to count so i think performing live should be another um another skill that uh, producers should uh, look into as well um right now i see a lot of producers getting into uh, performing live but uh, it's definitely something that producers should focus on other than producing music uh, with the same amount of weight is because uh, at the end of the day um, if you're planning to go outside sri lanka uh, you need gig experience and you should be able to show the promoters that you've done some serious work in your own country um and uh, i feel as if the easiest market to get into uh, perform live as a dj and as a drum and bass artist would be india and uh, maybe towards uh, towards uh, bali um, australia is another destination that can be uh, looked into uh, europe is a little bit far away but Uh, it's an open market to get into. Honest, anybody can do anything as long as they produce good, good music. The first step should be you should make good music, and then you should perform, and then you get gigs. So basically, that's kind of like the the entire process of uh, performance. And also, when it comes to performing, uh, there should, there would be unique ways of performance. I mean, for me, I use. uh i use a launch uh, launch pad a launch control excel uh, my laptop and maybe a launch key if, 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 if there's any requirement but uh, when it comes to another person he or she could be using cdj uh, or any other controller for that matter it doesn't really matter as long as you can get the crowd jumping up and uh, do some serious damage so basically it's up to you as to how you are going to perform but performing should be uh, another aspect that uh, we just should get into the sky is the limit right i mean honestly like guys the digital age yes yeah, so yeah, like it's so easy to connect with international artists producers magazines labels online right i mean yeah all these labels get like thousands and thousands of messages but like thanks to the internet you can actually reach out internationally and i think we should as, as artists as, as producers we should aspire to you know make it huge in sri lanka but never ever keep a limit on just making it here only i think it's really what constantly uh, push international in it i honestly think it's very important to aim international also um so yeah sure i mean this is awesome um um i have a question for hibshi and pratap um what is your creative process how, how how do you how do you approach creating a track Should I answer? Should I answer? So you're asking me about the creative process of me making music. Yeah. Oh, that's very hard to explain, man. Like uh, it. But I didn't get it. Okay. It can be many things. Sometimes it comes in the most weird, weirdest moment. Like I'm always prepared to, um, you know, put in my ideas somewhere because I get like if I sit in front of the computer and let's see, okay, I'm gonna think that like, I'm gonna make a song today. It's never gonna happen. and like if i just let myself free and do some work at some point something strikes in um a like a a radio ad could strike me a uh, facebook post could give me inspiration um i don't know many things give me inspiration so at that moment i need to record that because i forget it really fast you know so i always i always have my phone ready so it, it's a if it's a concept of a we sometimes i think about a song in a way of a visual right then for example my song buttonala when i heard that beat i actually saw a person playing a flute in the paddy field and that's when i started writing this whole thing about like this whole song about buttonala so when i have that thought i need to work at that moment or or else i will lose that magic moment so i'm a person who works in the magic moment i need to get my things like as soon as possible when the window is open i record everything i put my thoughts down write it up or freestyle whatever <clears throat> and get my uh 
image that I have in my head across. And then I'm done. Then I can slowly work on it, build on it. And then I make the music. Then I think about the video. Then I change it. But me as a person, I work on a magic moment. And I ha have many of them. So my creative process is to get my magic moment recorded somewhere so I can work on it. If I can put it that way. Yeah. What you thought about this? Um, I kind of agree with Costa in that sense. I think uh, something a lot of people might not know about me. I talk about production all the time, but I'm actually as much a songwriter, right? So a lot of songs, a lot of our songs, um, I'm talking about Middle Class Rich Kids, which is myself and Shinnick. Um, a lot of our songs start with songwriting first, right? So a lot of it starts with me at a keyboard writing a melody, lyrics, concepts, whatever. And then we go into production. We talk about how we can make this sound, the sound design, like all of that comes after. But like Pratap said, that that spark of inspiration could come anywhere. So for example, this is my, I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, no, you can't. But I'm trying to show you my, uh, Why not? my Why audio not? recorder on my phone. Hold on. Yeah, so that's all just recordings, right? Like of just random shit that comes into my head. I have a, a, an audio titled yes. MC Food Court because I had this thought that came out in MC Food Court. So when I look at it, I know that's where that happened, right? So that's what it is. So it, it, it'll happen anywhere. And then I need to get home onto my keyboard and I need, I need to, need to write, sort of write it out. And then, you know, your song can go anywhere from there. But like he said, you need to catch that, that spark when it happens. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, for me, of course, um, I guess I do, a, I do things a little bit differently in that sense because I always spend a lot of time uh, uh, designing sounds before I start producing. Um, I, I just load a bunch of ACs and then I start designing sounds uh, in terms of what I want in the track, uh, the drums, the snares, the hi-hat patterns that I want and then uh, after about a good four or five hours I, I, I compile everything and then start making loops out of them. I, I mix and match between the sounds I've created and then I, I create about a 32 bar loop and, uh, and after that I seen uh, when I get a direction as to how the songs would sound and uh, uh, the direction as to uh, where the songs would go, then I start producing music when it comes to drum and bass. But uh, it's really interesting to see how how you guys approached uh, uh, the tracks uh, as well, because uh, voice notes is some, not something that I usually do. I mean, I I, I have a day to day job. I, I work at MS Holdings. So I'm a business analyst by day, and then during the daytime, there's there's no magical moment for me. Uh, it's basically my day job, and then whenever I come home, I get a rest, and then uh, I start I sit down in front of my laptop, and then I go through sounds, and maybe something hits, maybe something don't, but I definitely do something, and then sometimes it gets somewhere. So that's kind of uh, like the creative process that I have. But it's really interesting. Uh, about uh, the voice note thing. Uh, you know what applies to songwriters more than it does to producers because like I mean there are times when I start songs as a producer as well and then I can uh, you know sort of uh, relate to what you're saying because we do that as well okay. but then a lot of the times now I try to approach it as a songwriter first and then production comes later. That makes but, a lot of sense because both you guys have uh, vocals on your tracks. It's really a, an occasional occurrence for me when it comes to drum and bass. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah because you said like you don't get any inspiration during your uh, work hours, right? For me, yeah. that's the that's that's the other thing, bro. Before I had before I had a day job, most of the time my inspiration sparks in the like when I'm working and I'm fed up of this job. I'm like, man, I, if I, then I hit something, I record on my phone, right? Then and there, go home and work. So, I've done that too, by the way, right? At my day job, like I, I would just be walking around office, just all run into my boardroom, shut the door, and just like do a yeah. recording. Like I've done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think because you don't have lyrics in your music, it doesn't really work for you that much. Yeah. But you asked the question from Hibi, uh, from uh, oh, Shehar, I swear she didn't answer. Well, so, yeah. What, what's, what's, what's your creative process? It's pretty much the same process, man. Like half the time I'm walking around in the garden with the kids, they're yeah, screaming around, and then I end up, you know, growling or sticking into my phone. So my voice notes are complete to full as well, and I have like all these ideas. Um, most of the time, inspiration comes from me when I go through a really shit time. Um, and I think that's common to all of us. 
Yeah, so it's kind of like a, an understanding process in my head and then once I'm capable of overcoming it, I think all that is just exercise through lyrics and melodies on my phone or like I sit down and write all the lyrics. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. Yeah. And uh, my voice yeah. recordings are children shouting in it, but yeah. <laughs> Any any uh, any releases that uh, we are to look at uh, into the future from you guys? Uh, yeah, from him. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, with uh, again with middle class rich kids, I think very early on we understood that if we were to do this seriously, releasing consistently is important. So we've had a one song a month sort of model. So when we started middle class rich kids, we had about 10 songs done and good to go. So we had the whole of 2020 planned out for. So, I mean, even now I can see us having enough music all the way to the middle of 2021. And we are still like creating music all the time. So as long as we can try to hit that mark of releasing music every four to five weeks, um, we are happy. So we have enough in the bank. How about you, Kosta? Sam, I can agree with Vijay as well. I have like, already like around four re albums recorded I have in my PC ready to go but the thing is that uh, I'm in a pace where I'm trying to little bit slow down things and like not give so much music because uh, you know sometimes you feel like uh, if you give too much also then it will become like uh, it's just another song from this guy you know so I, I want to break that uh, this thing so I released my last album this year it's an EP it was an EP sorry it was not an album so I'm going to do Again, all the Lama. visuals for Lanka we call it. Okay. So I'm going to do all the visuals for it. I have done recorded everything now. All the vi music videos are ready. So them videos going to drop every month uh, from July. And then we have a project together with Sasit, me and Ravi J. That probably should drop as well. It's a very big project. And then my fans can expect an album in December, I guess. So that's when I'm going to drop a, a fresh set of music again yeah till then i will be releasing my music videos and stuff like that yeah what about you yeah i'm actually uh, i'm recording vocals for a, for a track by an Maldive Indian guy um so we're collaborating internationally and that's going to be done soon and then uh, pre-covid i recorded uh, a video the band and i recorded a video for love Fight energy so that will be out hopefully next month uh, edits are done still finalizing it so yeah that should be cool and then i'm also writing the second album so that should be cool so record soon. and i have a question for janita as well uh, what is the next big thing no i can't sing no, have... i can't <laughs> <laughs> what is the next big big thing that uh, we as producers should uh, be looking forward to in the internet world i think i don't know for me uh, as much as this pandemic has been tragic uh, I see, I mean, even in, in, in the dark clouds, you'll see the lining, right? For me, the lining is this has really um, democratized content creation because be before all of this, it was monopolized, right, by a few people. But right now, the individual creator has far more power than he or she has ever had. So for me, I think uh, monetization is becoming more and more general. And, and with Facebook also bringing in monetization, I think. For, for this, especially uh, the likes of Costa, it, it's a really, you know, great opportunity because as we know, even Sri Lankans are mostly on Facebook. So with that monetization, I think it will give, a, give you all a lot more leverage. And then, I mean, with money, whether we like it or not, we live in a capitalistic world, right? So with money, you can do more, whether you like it or not. So with increased monetization, that's what I think people will see by December, January, early next year you will see an increased uh, monetization potential for all of your original content. But this is the time to hunker down and do content because most of the time right now is not the best time to release content. So for, for, for me, in terms of digital, even for Sri Lankans, whether you appeal to the Sri Lankan market or you're going abroad, which you anyway should aim at, right? What I'm seeing is an explosion of how you can monetize and also how, how many eyeballs you can get and how many years you can get for your content. So that's always a good sign for you all as a content creator, right? So this is the time to do content, right? As much as possible. And, and, and the monetization and the revenue will definitely come very soon. It's going to be an avalanche. Janet, uh, because you've done this before, you've been in this for a very long time, how can you help artists, anybody who wants to actually start doing this, uh, 
um, how can you help and how can you con- how can they contact you yeah so idea here launched share of we are at capacity now so we've honestly stopped giving memberships because at the end of the day we our resources are limited right so i give out my maximum one membership a uh, month right and and musicians i have always had this off thought so i will always give monetization to musicians right so because i think for, for me original content creation my love for it also started with music though i can't produce or do anything about it i'm a listener i'm on the other side of the spectrum right so for for those creators i mean if this is not a marketing pitch for idea as i said we we have too many memberships pending but if you really want to and you are serious about content creation and doing good music right we will actually give you all of the resources needed to do music videos like camera we might do the production for you all of that because you as a musician most of the time the musicians who come to us they don't have any idea how to direct their videos they don't have the resources so we take care of all of that and also as a network we are stronger because in youtube especially you know that like there's no virality like facebook you have to generate your views from youtube itself so since we have so many music channels under us and a new piece of content comes we use the suggestion box that you see at the end of every video where you can suggest four videos so you use that to make your music more discoverable so that as a network we have that power right together we are stronger because again i see something that is very lacking in sri lanka is the is the collaboration which sasi uh, mentioned right because collaboration is the is one of the most strongest ways we can help our musicians out i mean we have to keep our petty politics aside and you know help each other out because someone getting more views than you is not a bad thing it's it's a combined we we view the music industry in sri lanka as a cumulative whole the more views we get for that industry is at the end a good thing for everyone right so for me again idea hell we will give you all of that so we will take care of all of those uh, nightmares for you and even if you just want to you can do your own videos and you want copyright protection uh that's something we can give you at idea hell where you we can block off anyone who can upload your music illegally right and also we can give you monetization only for that because we, our revenue shares are very fair because idea hell for me was a more of a social entrepreneurship than a money making thing and it's always going to be that as long as i'm there so uh, so what we can offer for musicians who are coming up is that copyright protection right a monetization and if they need resources we are again willing to step in and i think sasit was also a part of it uh, nca no covers a loved was an event that was done by pulse which will obviously start again once uh, things normalize which was you know again started with the one hope that we can take an original artist in sri lanka international by first creating a demand locally like these guys said because without demand locally you can't appeal on uh, internationally so nca events like that will happen and i think if it will be a miss if i do not mention yasmin uh, i think everyone would nod in a little while yes everyone nodding so uh, mm-hmm. decibel uh, she is doing a, 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 a mammoth effort to to bring together the music industry here because uh, that is in dire need right so so i think we have enough platform so in terms of id health that's the that's the help we can give so they can definitely contact me through any of the social media platforms and i can direct them where we can uh, you know give them those services um in terms of uh how start getting your music how can people purchase your music or if they want to work with you how can they contact you um anything you'd like to add as a closing note Oh, with work with me actually most of the time i approach artists whom i like to work with but if you feel like you they, if there's something that you can connect with me and work with me of course he hit, hit on me on my instagram i have my like you know i have my manager's uh, instagram account there you just can talk to him and get me booked it's not that easy you can drop me a email and the only criteria is if you're talented and like if we really vibe with each other's music i'm down to work that's it yeah uh, Any advice you can give upcoming artists, producers? Well, trust your music, regardless whoever you could be your closest people that could let you down. Um, try to work on your stuff. Give time. Be focused. Uh, trust yourself and just hustle hard. You will become somebody one day for sure. That's it. That's the only advice I can give. Just believe in your craft. Don't let other people's thoughts get into you focus on your music and just be tunnel focused that's it and you will be who you want to be yeah awesome if she tell us tell us how can people contact you how can people work with you um, i can define your music everybody's 45 girls and 
What would you like uh, to yeah, tell I mean, us? The music, the music's available on all the major platforms, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, everywhere. Um, in terms of working with me, I think like Cosper said, even I'm the same, like I would reach out to most artists that I'm interested in working with, but if anybody particularly wants to work with and be vibe, then it's gonna happen. Um, in terms of advice, I think like the one thing I always tell people is quality is everything. Like um, stop chasing after the numbers or the like whatever. I think all of those things will happen once you get the quality aspect of it right, right? Like the music industry is so saturated. Everyone's doing it. Just make sure you're doing something that can compete on that level and everything else is going to start happening. Like the doors are going to start opening. So quality is everything as far as I'm concerned. Where, where we can find your music. Um, what's, Everything is um, on Spotify, iTunes. I think I have all my EPs listed on uh, the digital platforms. Uh, I have one EP with the heavy artillery recordings and then uh, two EPs with the high child recordings and then uh, a one self uh, release EP, which was my first EP. So everything is online. You can go and uh, check them out. Uh, and in terms of reaching me out, you can reach me out on Instagram, Facebook, uh, whatever medium you want to reach me out, I, I most definitely reply to you. Uh, and in terms of working with me, if you're talented, if you can write, uh, if you vibe, definitely we are going to work. Uh, out of the three people, uh, the, the musicians, I reached out all three of them <laughs> to collaborate with me. So it, it's, just a, it's just a matter of uh, making good content, uh, making good music, and then uh, making a mark out of it in the industry and you will get into bigger things because I started in my bedroom and I ended up on EDM.com which, which used to be uh, which is the which is the biggest uh, uh, EDM related uh, network being on BBC radio um, being on promotional networks just like it's yeah we, we all of all of us work from uh, our bedrooms it's just a matter of focusing just like Costa said and uh, putting real work behind your art and uh, pushing the boundaries uh, of Sri Lankan music. Um, in terms of novelty, I think novelty should be definitely a factor that should be introduced to Sri Lankan music because most of the time what we hear uh, in the local music industry are repokes. It's the same thing recycled over and over and over and again. Uh, that should not be the case ideally. I mean, if you look at the golden days where Ranindu and Iras used to pump good music, the BNS used to make really original music where we used to buy those cassettes and with our lunch money and uh, we, we basically memorize all the lyrics. lyrics. That should be the present scenario as well. Yeah. That, 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 that era should replicate itself to the digital era as well. That's, that's currently something which is lacking in the local industry, originality and original content. So, so I think I think we, as young musicians, upcoming musicians, we should we should uh, be mindful and uh, we should make it a habit to do something really original. Whenever we release music, whenever we release uh, video content, it should be original and it should be something new uh, to the local industry. And uh, yeah, just collaborate among yourselves and make good music. And everything and everything else will fall into its place. Number one is music, the rest will follow you. Awesome. So you know who to reach out to now if you need help releasing your music. Um, if you want advice, contact them. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Shatalan so much for having this webinar because it's shedding light on a lot of stuff that are just taboo in the music industry. And um, one thing I really want to highlight is to every fan out there, um, please follow people on Instagram, um, share their content, watch every video and add on YouTube because now you know that it makes, uh, that it generates revenue for artists who are monetizing, right? So, um, and most important, support artists by buying their music and their merchandise. Actually, um, go the extra mile to spend and support them financially by, you know, buying their music and buying their merchandise. Um, yeah. It was awesome having you guys here and nice uh, chatting with all of you guys. Thank you so much for sharing your information. Um, it was really nice having everybody speak up you know, and sharing all their information with the next. So thank you so much and I think that's a wrap. Let's keep in touch. Thank you.
Thank you. Cheers. Anyway, bye. See you guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye.